In the previous video, we talked about setting a good process for migration to React. This video is all about technology just for developers who are parts of the team migrating to React.js. In our experience, React is the most desired front-end framework for enterprises. Unlike many other frameworks, React is focused on one thing only, view rendering. This is great because it leaves software architects to finally tailor the rest of the application. For the experienced architects, this freedom means avoiding vendor lock-in. And they do that by relying on the very language, JavaScript, rather than a framework's mindset. And before we take a deep dive into best development practices, please like this video and subscribe to our channel if you want to get early access to other videos just like this one. I'm pretty sure you're gonna want to come back to this video later as your migration to React commences. I'm starting from number nine because I already covered the first eight best practices in the video on process. So number nine best practice is extract the critical know-how from the legacy application. Now consider that this application worked for years. It's highly likely that you have already fixed some of the major bugs in that application. Now, you don't want to repeat those bugs, do you? The best thing you can do is to create acceptance tests or maybe sometimes unit tests that are going to prove that those bugs do not exist in the new system. If you can't do that, at least document those critical areas so that they can be manually tested later on. Then, automate early. Code standards, formatting, accessibility rules, and even performance budgets can all be automated before writing the first line of code. Some checks, like linting and allo formatting, are great candidates for get hooks like pre-commit hooks. Husky and lint staged are great libraries to achieve this. The other checks are best implemented in a continuous integration environment that's going to check every pull request or commit. React's developer experience ecosystem is full of amazing libraries and products for automation. 11. Split work into smaller chunks. Small code chunks allow for faster review time and faster fixes. You can always create feature branches, but I encourage you to create small pull requests. On some projects, I even implemented pre-publish GitHook to check if the newly introduced change was greater than 1,000 lines of code. Now, the number of lines of code is irrelevant. The important thing is, that the changes we introduce are small. They're a lot easier to review, and once reviewed, a lot easier to make changes to. 12, create a good onboarding process for new team members. Just like in any other project, there may be some turnover. You also may be welcoming team members that are visiting just temporarily. Maybe there are subject matter experts that know some of the sections of the legacy application really well, and they are here to help for specific features. Either way, the great documentation is incredibly important. I also suggest kitchen sink examples using something like Storybook. Have great NPM scripts that will allow starting application or maybe tests with just one command line. And I highly suggest using containerized environments, something like Docker. This is going to create a universal environment for everyone to be able to work in and develop your new application. And we got to 13, 
maintain a lasting strangler facade. And what is this? When you migrate to a new application, chances are some parts are not going to be compatible with legacy, such as routing. A user may be, for example, accessing an old URL. In that case, you need to create a proper migration strategy so that they can actually reach the new URL. In many cases, the Strangler facade or this layer could exist in the cloud. I suggest that it's never in the application because it adds unnecessary weight if you can keep it in the cloud. Serverless functions are great for this. Functions like AWS Lambda or Cloudflare workers. Serverless functions on the edge are phenomenal because they are on CDN, very close to your users. And in most cases, the latency is around 30 milliseconds, which is incredibly fast and users are not even going to notice. 14, bring in the tests. Even if you have legacy tests, then migrate them over. You don't even have to run them as long as you read them. In some tests, you're going to find hidden edge cases. Now, these are going to be essential because you're going to know exactly what you need to build when migrating. Um, sometimes running legacy unit tests is going to be difficult. You're going to need to migrate. However, even if you have something that's good, it's a lot easier to migrate and base new unit tests off of the legacy ones. Another type of tests that you want to migrate over are acceptance tests. I know that they are slow and painful, but you can always put them in a CI environment and you really should. Acceptance tests are going to be your best indicator that the migration is really going well. And 15, don't go back to rewrite code. Now, this is so common. When you start the migration, you're learning new things. And as time goes on, you get better at React, better at the architecture that you're building. Now, most teams tend to go back to the features that they develop early on, and they try to rewrite them because, hey, we know better now. However, rewrites are really hard to justify comparing to bug fixes and creating new features. Try to explain business value uh, for the rewrite that you want to do. Now, don't confuse rewrites with technical debt. Technical debt is intentional. It's, um, it's part of the application that you are leaving imperfect because you need that time to be productive. But you know that you're eventually going to come back and improve that area. And finally, 16, maintain a great documentation. Obviously, you're going to write self-documenting code, I'm sure. And you're going to write comments in the code. I'm sure that's going to be the case as well. Any kind of documentation you can create, even if it's in a form of markdown and readme file, is going to be phenomenal. Just list all the reasons for making certain decisions, list all the to-dos, and all the areas for improvement. A good documentation will improve the longevity of your product, and it's going to avoid future rewrites. And that sums up the technical or development best practices for migrating to React. Stay tuned to the remainder of the 21 best practices for migrating to React.js. And if you like this video, share it with your network and subscribe to our channel.